will step in and disconnect you from that position in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I and the children which the Lord God had given me, we are for signs and for wonders. That's it. We are for signs and for wonders. Whatever makes it look like it's not so for you. The one that has declared his word will come in and perfect and make it happen in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you like, that's a topic. Who has corrupted my destiny? Praise God. Let me begin to let us know that every man, including the one listening to me now, every man's ancestry has a contribution towards his life whether good or bad every man's ancestry there is something about your background that it can be seen in your life there's something about your ancestors that if it is investigated spiritually they can locate the trace of what happened before that is reflecting as you know something presently in your life hear the testimony of that my daughter said he took the children to american embassy and the american embassy said well let's run what kind of test did he say? DNA test. And when they went through the DNA test, they said, truly these are the sons of this man. There's something about your ancestry that is reflected silently in your life. Is somebody hearing me? Whatever someone has done in your family that has brought suffering in your life, Today, God will settle that matter. Amen. Oh, you are not getting me. I say, God will settle that matter. Amen. I say, God will settle that matter. Amen. God will settle that matter. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So there's something. Whether good or bad, there is something. From your ancestry that is reflecting right now in your life. If it is good, it has brought laid down blessings. If it is bad, it has brought laid down battles. Laid down problems. That is why you see someone from a particular ancestry. Particular lineage. And they enter into battles in their lives. And the man can ask, what have I done? No, you may not have done something, but someone in your lineage, someone in your family, someone, your grandfather must have done something and you see the effect of it in your life. You see the effect in your life. So the original intent of God from the beginning can be corrupted by acts of men. Is somebody hearing me? Now watch this, number one. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God's creation was perfect. God created the heaven and the earth. But that statement showed that the creation of God was good, was perfect. But it was corrupted. For the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Until God began another recreation. And God said, I, I can't stand this. This is not my original purpose. This is not my original intent for man. And God said, let there be light to bring form and shape to the formlessness and the shapelessness on the earth. And the Holy Spirit began to brood upon what was said to make it a reality. 
and the beauty return on the earth and form that is the earth took form and took shape people could see things and admire things on the earth the corruption that came on the earth god removed it by bringing his spirit upon it afresh so it does not matter what you are going through right now that could be traced to your ancestry that could be traced to a problem in your lineage today as the holy spirit comes afresh on you there is going to be recreation there is going to be rebuilding god is going to step into your life and reconstruct your destiny can somebody shout a big amen? amen that is why there are things you are going through now that from the beginning it was not meant to be so it was not meant to be so from the beginning it was not meant to be so there is no one person that god has created and he said as you go you'll be a sofa head till you die no one person everyone carries a measure of glory from god every man carries a measure of fulfillment upon his destiny at birth but in the process of life in the process of living life many have corrupted their destinies or for some their destinies have been corrupted through their lineage and so today god will reconstruct your destiny god will reconstruct your destiny now i'm talking to you i say god will reconstruct your destiny you know what the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 19 he said in the beginning it was not so so there are some things that you are going through in your life in the beginning it was not meant to be so somebody hear me can i show you that scripture in the book of matthew 19 and verse number 8 he said in the beginning it was not so 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 hallelujah hallelujah he said he said unto them moses because of your hardness the hardness of your heart so far you to take put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so so there are some things you are going through now that in the beginning it was also it was not part of your destiny it was not part of the intention of god for your life but due to certain things happening around you these things began to manifest in your life that is why this meeting today is important because god will search through your lineage and disconnect you from things that are happening in your life which was not intended originally to be your portion things which was not things which we were not intended to be your portion but you are seeing it happening you were not created to suffer you were not created to be on the floor you will not no one was created to go through things time and again wars and problems whatever laid down problems for you god will disconnect you from that lineage i thought someone should say a big amen if it is bad it lays down battles that's why you see someone is born he, he sees battles from the one there are people who have to fight to have one square meal till they die they just fight battle for food some battle for children they have to fight and struggle and struggle and struggle before something good happens they have to struggle and struggle and struggle before something good happens they have to fight and fight and fight before something good happens they have to fight and fight if they don't fight their destiny continues to experience laid down battles laid down problems but today by the mercies of god every contention in your destiny shall be taken away in the name of jesus it shall be taken away in the name of jesus what was not supposed to be so from the beginning cannot continue in my life can you make that statement for yourself say with me what was not supposed to be so from the beginning what was not intended to be so in my life which i'm seeing right now must not continue beyond today 
open your lips and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because a church is coming. A church is coming. A church is coming your way. A church is coming your way. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. The next question I want to answer is what choices did your parents make? What choices did your progenitors make? Now I will tell you why I brought that question up. What choices did your progenitors make that is affecting you now? What choices? The word progenitor simply means ancestors. What your ancestors, what choices did they make? For some an ancestors, they choose to worship stone. They worship idols. Some ancestors in some lineage. Some sacrifice human beings. So ancestors did that. It was a choice they made. So what choices did your ancestors make? I, I told you a story. There's a family in my village. I was born to see that family. And we attended primary school together with some of those little ones from that particular family. Are you listening to me? We attended the same primary school and in December, during December time, where small, small children are called to come and, you know, say something, make poem, you know, recite poems, and people will clap for you. The parents are there at the end of the, the term. The parents are there, and small, small children will come and say, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, hi, I wonder how you are, and people will clap. Children from this family, small, small children, four years, five years, when they come to do their own, they will stand and bring out brand new razor blade from their mouths and he didn't cut them. I said, ah, we used to be afraid of them, but that, ah, what kind of children is this? They will set fire and step on it. Small, small children, and he won't burn them. Ah. But do you know what is happening today? All of them are mad. All, not one. All of them are mad. They walk on the street and kick invisible football. They don't walk on the street and be doing like this. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them, the three of them are mad. There are some things your ancestors have done that might be responsible for what you are going through. That's why God has set aside today on the first day of the 10th month to remove the coverings of old in your life. Oh, uh, someone is not understanding me. Remove the covering. Can you imagine those children? Their parents introduced them to wrong things. I remember the father was a necromancer. There is someone that could speak to the dead. He had a grave in his house. Introduced those young ones. Can you see? In the beginning, it was not so for those children. But their fathers did something. Their fathers put them through something. Their fathers introduced them to something. And at the end, they became mad. Whatever was not, whatever experience was not intended for your destiny that you are going through right now, may Jehovah God reconstruct your life. Can I hear that a minute if you believe it? That's why this question, what did, what choices did your progenitors make that is affecting you now? Let me say this, number one. Ancestral lineage is recognized by God as a channel for the flow of blessings to future generations. God recognizes it. So originally, God created this process, this channel, to make blessings flow. But because some of the channels have been corrupted, instead of blessings flowing, from the father to the son and to the grandson and to great grandchildren instead of blessings flowing that way you will see in some lineages you will see problems flowing that way so a child is born is fighting his father's battle 
the battle that his father fought and left he comes to fight it he comes to inherit the battle he comes to inherit the problem but today in the name of jesus christ god will pull you out of that kind of experience remember this is get up and go that means god is coming to bring you out of that place and release you into your destiny in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now listen because i say god acknowledges ancestral lineage as a channel for the flow of blessings how do i know that look at it god said to abraham i will bless you and your children and your children's children. so it was to come under that blessing am i talking so when god blesses a man it's not just limited to him the blessing must flow through that lineage the blessing must flow it must flow to your children it must flow to your children's children now let me say this it, there's also a family i knew of in my village i've told you one i tell you that there are two families i saw that certain things were happening in their families this family i'm talking about this second family eh, anger Ooh. they must fight every day they fight and if a teacher beats any of their children oh the whole troop is a troop who could, <laughs> they could and say the teacher who beats my child amen but do you know that that thing has landed them in serious 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 issues from background from background any background that is corrupting your destiny today i pray that god will take you out of that background in the name of jesus christ you can't run away from background it's very important it influences people it influences them background background that's why in those olden days and it's relevant even till today when you want to marry they go and investigate in the village is that not so it's important so don't think it's not important it's important they go and investigate investigate what kind of <laughs> when they know what your father and your mother who they were and it was they say he will carry a trace of it and true he will carry a trace of it that's the truth that's the truth so god's intention originally was to allow blessings to flow through lineage do you know that life becomes easy if your father had a major breakthrough in life am i talking your life becomes easy am i talking can you imagine how the children of buffet is it buffet warren or something bill gates or buffet there's a man buffet something warren buffet can you know can you imagine how their children their grandchildren and their great great grandchildren how their lives will be because a blessing is flowing through the lineage oh, rather, can you imagine how for instance bill gates you know it's a channel your lineage this is a channel god agrees god accepts that that your lineage should be a channel for the flow of blessings but, but can, can you imagine, imagine if the one that started the lineage was worshiping snake <laughs> was worshiping the spirit of snake in the family don't you know that the children will struggle Don't you know so? That the children will struggle? And when they were making a sacrifice to these idols, they used it to give these children food to eat? Don't you think they will struggle? But today, God has set aside to bring you out of every corrupted lineage. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall be brought out in the name of Jesus. Every corruption in your lineage. Every corruption in your lineage. That, that is affecting you now. God will locate you and bring you out. Can, Can you say amen? amen? Yeah. Number two, 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 two. Not also that some of those lineages have become perfected. That is, God's intention was that these lineages, where you come from, your father's house, your progenitors, your, your grandfather, your father's house, God put it there so that there will be, it will be a flow of blessing to your life, to make your life easy. The next generation 
of your, of your life, your children, should have it easy, easier than you. Am I talking? It should have it easier than you. Your next generation should not come and be struggling more than you. Can you say amen to that? Your great-grandchildren should not come and be struggling more than their great-grandfather. It's supposed to, to make it easier and easier as generations go on. So you will not suffer again. I said you shall not suffer again. So because of the corruption in many destinies, in many families, the progenitors, the ancestral corruption, many are going through what they are going through now. That is why today is important. God will trace into eternity past. Eternity is not only about the future. You have eternity future. You also have eternity past. And God can traverse both realms. Can go into eternity future. Like he helped John to enter eternity future. And he began to say things at the island of Patmos. He began to say things that will happen. John. That was banished into that island. And God brought him into eternity future and they began to say things. But there was a man God brought into eternity past. His name is Moses. When God created heaven and earth, Moses was not there, isn't it? Was he there? It was God that brought him into eternity past to know what happened at the beginning. And he began to say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Did it, was he there? But God brought him into eternity past. So God has ability to enter into eternity past in your family and see a corruption that your great grandfather did that is affecting you now and will uproot that tree. Oh, Lord. It will uproot that seed. That seed that is corrupting your destiny, God will uproot it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, after the fall of man, after the fall of man, just like every other thing became perverted, certain lineages have become perverted. Oh, you know, after the fall of man, perversion came on creation. Everything God created was perfect, beautiful. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and it was without form and void. So, corruption entered. Perversion entered. I just saw in some families. That's why I showed you a scripture in the beginning. It wasn't so. It was, you were not meant to be a survivor. God will help you and bring you out today in the name of Jesus Christ. For many, such have become channels for the transfer of generational problems. They are family. Somebody called me last, last night. A woman kept me awake. On my phone, I had to switch it off. From America. So it's not where you are. If you are from that root that is evil, anywhere you go to, you, st you are still there because the root is spiritual. Are you hearing me? It's spiritual. Can you imagine someone in America saying, Pastor, you must help me. He said, I am virtually standing on the road begging in America. America. Say, I'm virtually standing on the road begging. He said, the unfortunate thing is that any man that gives me a little thing wants to take me to bed. That's the unfortunate thing. Frustration. Vulnerable. That's become vulnerable. He said, Pastor, please help me. Help me. I want you. I have a daughter. Please, can you help me? Ruth. I'm not talking about someone that has a name, Ruth. Is different from <laughs> root simply means where you where you came out from your lineage corrupted lineage will bring about corrupted destiny your struggles will be over this month yeah. by the mercy of God your struggles shall be over this month what has to be done is to disconnect her from that root. That's it. To disconnect her from that root. 
which God has given me spiritual insights on how to disconnect people that have come under that kind of route to disconnect them and I will show you do you know that Jesus Christ the route that Jesus Christ was supposed to come from had a problem you know he had a problem the route you know the book of Ruth is a continuation of the book of the book of Matthew is a continuation of the book of Ruth that's a story for another day because you can, you can take an hour for me to unfold the secret there praise God if you go and check the book of Matthew from verse 1 chapter 1 from verse 1 to 16 in verse 17 I think verse 17 it says the generations the generations he said he said so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations huh? how many generations that is from Abraham unto David they were 14 generations and from David to the carrying away into Babylon were 14 generations and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ was 14 generations so how many is that you didn't do mathematics in school at least arithmetic at least arithmetic that is plus plus so 14 plus 14 is what <laughs> plus another 14 some people get it that's a teacher you know teacher got it that's our head teacher the head teacher of our school can you clap for her for some of you who were running away from mathematics class you see mathematics has followed you to church <laughs> hallelujah so from verse 1 to verse 16 the bible says there are how many generations 42 generations but if you go to the next verse and count you will see 41 generation you see how many 41 generation what happened to one generation i will teach you on the missing generation one generation was missing that's why Christ did not come to the world like they came to the world. It's a mystery. There's a missing generation. I will take time to teach you on the missing generation. So that if you are coming from that kind of lineage, and by the spiritual wisdom that God has given to me, I'll put you through so that you will cut off from that generation. And then you begin to experience great and amazing things happening in your life. Life becomes easy. And you don't go through what they go through you don't go through what they have been going through in your family you don't go through what they have been going through because you have been disconnected from that lineage can you say amen to that yeah. can you say amen to that yeah. hallelujah so any kind of channel that is transferring generational problems generational battles generational manipulations into your life I decree that channel is cut off in the name of Jesus I'm talking about generational manipulation what is manipulation a lot of us talk about manipulation I'm not going to bother you with dictionary meaning of manipulation I'm going to use the experiential meaning of manipulation what is manipulation so whatever has brought generational manipulation into your destiny today an answer has come Number one is a process whereby things are influenced and controlled in order to determine future outcome that may be different from what you are thinking. A process whereby things are influenced and controlled in order to determine future outcome. We hear people say my destiny has been manipulated by witches my destiny so it's a process of influencing your destiny to bring out an outcome that might be different from the original intent of god for instance god has intended that any woman he said there shall be no barrenness in your in your midst and then a child of god is barren there's a manipulation there to bring out a, a result that is different from the original intent of god praise god and if God is the owner of all the earth, he said the earth belongs unto God. A thousand hills, the cattle on a thousand hills, they have the Lord. He said the silver is mine, the gold is mine in the book of Haggai. How come you are struggling to have the little thing to eat? So something is manipulating your life. 
that an end has come to the manipulations. I say an end has come to the manipulations. If you carry a corrupted destiny, if you carry a perverted destiny, if you carry a perverted seed around in your life, Jesus will turn your destiny the right side up this morning. I said, Jesus will turn your destiny the right side up this morning. There are questions of life that can show the need why we are saying this. And number one, whose seed are you? So you need to find out whose seed am I? You see, there are things you need to know, you need to do first and don't run to do the next. If you are entangled, if this man is tied down physically with rope and he has a race to run tomorrow, what should he do first? Is it to, to just lie down there tomorrow he starts running? But that's what many people do. The first thing he should do is to untie himself. Is that not so? Because of the race tomorrow. There are people, they are tied by the enemy. They still go into business. Going to business is not the first thing to do. The first thing to do is to release yourself first. Because if you go into business spiritually tight, your business cannot produce. Your life cannot produce. Do you know what Jesus did? He went to the tomb of Lazarus. Now listen to this. Because you can, you can read the book of John chapter 11 and miss this. He went to the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. You know all the story, how he met Martha, Mary, and all of that and all of that. That's not where I'm going to. But he went to the tomb of Lazarus. The man had been dead for how many days? Okay, for this. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. Do you know what that signifies? It signifies someone that is brought forth from the region of dead. And you know when you are an unbeliever, you are in the region of dead. When Jesus saves you, he has brought you to the region of light. He said he has translated you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So as it were, it's like bringing you out from the dead. He said we were dead in sin, but Christ has brought us out. So it's like bringing you out from the region of the dead into the among the living. But the Bible says, and he that was dead came for tight. Oh, you didn't get that. He that was dead came forth. Is redeemed, but is entangled. You can be born again and still be entangled. If you don't believe that, you need to go to kindergarten school. Or look at lives. Practically, you know that you can be born again and still be entangled with certain things. There are some Christians who are born again, but they are still struggling with immorality. They are still entangled. That's why when Lazarus came forth, responding to the call of Christ, Jesus now turned to the disciples and said, lose him. That's a place of deliverance. Very important. Jesus said, I will not do that one. I've given you power to do that one. He told the disciples to do what? Lose him and let him go. That's the time he's free. That's the time he's free. Lose him and let him go. He has responded to the call. He's born again, but he's still tight. There are people that are born again and they are still entangled with certain things. They are still dreaming nightmares. They are still having, you know, uh, their sp spirit husband is still harassing them. Spirit wife is still harassing them and yet they are born again. Jesus said to the disciples, lose him. That's why deliverance is important. Hallelujah. I'm persuaded that today, deliverance is coming your way. Deliverance is coming your way. Whatever followed you after you gave your life to Christ, certain things still follow you around. Still, you are still held in captivity and you are still bound. Today, you will be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, you will be set free in Jesus' mighty name. So, certain questions. Whose seed are you? You need to ask yourself. See, you see, listen. 
I have to bring you to a point that you need to enter into personal inquiry. Many of you like to inquire about people. But you don't inquire about yourself. You point fingers at people. You inquire about people. You inquire about people. people, 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 people. And this tree is doing what? When you do this, what happens to this tree? Make personal inquiries. Whose seed am I? Find out what your father did. Because it could affect you. Find out what your grandfather, the life he lived, it could affect you. Find out. Whose seed are you? In 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 55, there was a man called Goliath of Gath. He was so powerful that they forgot his surname and attached the name of his country as if it were his surname, Goliath of Gath. At that time, the Philistines did not need a standing army. It was a one-man army. When Goliath stands up, out, he's the army of the nation. Praise God. Intimidated Israel. Saul was the king at the time. And all of that. One day, Saul saw a young man. About 17 years or so. Very young. Looked harmless. He went after Goliath. And brought Goliath down. The question that King Saul asked was, whose son is that? He didn't say, what is his name? Oh, you didn't get it. Let me go this way and see whether they will get it. Saul did not say, what is that boy's name? He said, what is his lineage? It was a question of lineage, not a question of name. Whose son is that? He, want, he made an inquiry into his lineage. For him to be able to accomplish that kind of feat, he must... Oh, somebody's not getting something. <laughs> Whose son is that? Make inquiry. Whose son am I? Are you hearing me? No. Sometimes you need to ask yourself, where am I from? Not in terms of like geographical location. What was my grandfather doing? Why am I going through this? All this one you are accusing your neighbor, accusing your neighbor. Yeah, it's not it. Something is from the root. That's why you accuse your neighbor and you transfer to another street. You still have the same problem. If it was your neighbor, why didn't your problem go? If I can move to another country, you still have the same problem. It's a question of root. It's a question of what? If you're, if you're okay, nobody, no witch can bring you down. Don't you know people that succeed, they also have enemies? Yeah. Are you the only one with good enemies? Stop it. Are you the only one? You see, I know where I would have been now if I did not have enemies. So what? Don't you know those who are up there, they have enemies, but enemies cannot stop them? May God grant you understanding. Amen. May God grant you understanding. Amen. May God grant you understanding. Amen. So he said, whose son are you? Can we, can we see get that scripture? In 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 55. Whose son? So Saul made an inquiry. Please, whose son is that? What is his back, who, where is his background? Where is his background? Where is he from? What's his lineage? For him to have that level of spiritual faith. To come against people that intimidated us. That's Saul talking. Goliath was intimidating Saul. Saul was a, an army man from birth. He wasn't a mean man. Goliath intimidated him. But when he saw David went after Goliath and brought him down. He said, where is he from? Tell me about his father. Who is his ancestor? <laughs> Who is the ancestor of David? And they came and told Saul, I said, is the son of Jesse. And go and trace the, go and study the background of Jesse. You see gallant people there. You see people with spirit of faith. On, on, you can't imagine. He took it from somewhere. The wisdom of Solomon. 
did not just come upon Solomon. He took it from his father. If you want to know the true wisdom of Solomon, read the Psalms that were written by David. You see that it was a, from a lineage of wisdom. He only increases it. You are to increase on the good things of your grandfather. Is somebody still here? Are you blessed this morning? So he said, whose son is that? Amen. Listen. God will help you. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. So, what's the good news? The good news here is that, can I tell you the good news? Okay. Psalm 112, verse 1 and verse 2. That's the good news for you. Psalm 112. Psalm chapter 100. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Blessed is the man that does what? That delighted greatly in his commandments. What will happen? So when you start your family with the fear of the Lord, what is it that is going to happen to your children? Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. What happens to his seed? His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Generation of the upright. Generation of the upright shall be blessed. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, save me from corrupt destiny. Can you open your mouth and pray? Save me. Save my destiny. Deliver me from corrupt destinies. From corrupt ancestors, corrupt lineage, serve the Lord. Oh, serve me in the name of Jesus. From corrupt destinies, in the name of Jesus. Zolaba talaba yakabai. In Jesus' mighty name, please listen because I'm going to advise you. I'm, I'm going, going to advise, advise you, but, but let me bring a tip of that advice on you. Do not add to the evil of your ancestors or you will increase your suffering. This is what I'm saying. If I come from a lineage that has been corrupted, maybe by idol worship or something, May I not come in my own time and ask to that, or else my children will be afflicted more. Is somebody hearing me? Are you sure you are getting it? For instance, if you, your father was an idol worshiper, and you come now in the 21st century, and you want to worship an idol, you know what you are doing? You are strengthening the foundation of corruption in your lineage. So your children, they are in trouble. Your children's children, they are in trouble for, for the wise, wise that, that is enough to understand how to conduct their lives so, so what it means is that if your your, your lineage, lineage is corrupted you can correct it now and say okay from now i will not follow that path i will change so that things can also change for me amen, amen. hallelujah now, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4. See what is happening there. Ah, sinful. Verse chapter 1 and verse number 4. I think this is. Um, okay. Let's go to chapter 14 verse 20. Quickly. Chapter 14 verse 20. I think that's the scripture I want to pick. Chapter 1 verse 20 says, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. Can you say amen? Because thou hast destroyed the land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. You know why some people have to struggle and struggle and struggle and they don't become prominent? The Bible says they shall never be prominent. Who shall never be prominent? The seed of evildoers. He still pecks it on lineage. He pecks it on where? Lineage. The seed of evildoers shall not be prominence. 
they will remain small. They cannot be great. They shall not be renowned in the land. The seed of evil was. So can you see God still pays seed on your lineage? He pays greatness on your lineage. That's why you see people, they struggle and struggle. There are some people, they will climb up and climb up and, and they, they come down. God will help you. The devil shall not be able to destroy you. Any kind of seed you are carrying that can destroy your destiny, may you destroy that seed before it destroys you. May you destroy that seed before it destroys you. May you destroy that seed before it destroys you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the good news is that the seed of the blessed shall be great. So how can this be? Number one, let me give you a few things. It can come through a change of lineage. And it's a whole process. I'm not going to the process. There are individuals, if you've noticed your lineage has a problem, you just come for personal counseling. We'll be able to counsel your community of the pastors here. They'll be able to lead you through. I will lead you through from Christ Jesus so that you can know how that the seed, the lineage can be changed. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now, tell me now. It's, it's very important. important. Every word you, you see in scripture has a spiritual, spiritual meaning. He began by saying, he began by taking the genealogy of Christ. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1 talks about the genealogy of Christ. He came to a place, he stopped, he said now. Oh my God. May God give you spiritual wisdom. He said, this gave birth to this. This man gave birth to this. This gave birth to this. This gave birth to this. This, to this. this, this. And went on and went on and went on and went on. If you count those, those, this gave birth to this, you will see 41. And yet, the summary in chapter 17, the Bible says there are 42. What happened? There was a missing generation. God can bring you into a place that your destiny is removed from this generation. And put, you start another generation. That's why the Bible says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. It was like this. It was not like that. <laughs> now, when, when somebody says it was like this, it means it was not like that. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was like this. Now he started by saying like that, like that. Like that, like that, like that. He stopped. He said, now, the birth of Jesus Christ was like this, not like that. Listen. If your destiny, if you are from a lineage that is corrupted, God can bring a change to it. Hallelujah. Of course, there are some people, it's not as if their lineages were perfect. And yet, they come out of the lineage. We just need to know what to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, through a change of lineage, there can be a change in your life. Tell your neighbor, through a change of lineage, there can be a change in your life. Let me show you a scripture. Isaiah 51, verse 1. Please, put that scripture. Look unto this. Don't look unto that. <laughs> Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Oh, he's talking about lineage there. He's talking about lineage. He's talking about what? If somebody is still alive, he's talking about what? He said, okay, let me explain again in verse 2 what I've been talking in parables in verse 1. Look unto Abraham, your father. Hmm? And unto Sarah, that bear you. Huh? Somebody said, my mother's name is... What's your mother's name? My mother's name is... Benis. Benis. And the Bible says, don't look unto Benis. Look unto Sarah that be you. Change your lineage. That's what he's saying. For I call 
Call him alone and bless him. A change of lineage will bring you into blessing. Of course, you know the lineage, the progenitor of Abraham. It was an idolatrous progenitor. Ancestors. They worship idol in the land of Ur. Chaldeans were idol worshippers. And yet God changed the lineage for Abraham. And he became great. God can do it for another person. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. Through the covenant of new birth. Through the covenant of new birth. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Jesus Christ went to the cross and took the curses. And took all the evil things. Put it on the cross with him. So that we can now receive the blessing. You know, it causes anyone that hang out on a tree. Verse 14 says, so that the blessing, the blessing of Abraham might come unto us. Remember, he told you in Isaiah, look unto Abraham. Look unto who? Look unto Abraham. So that the blessing of Abraham might come unto us, the Gentiles, through, through Christ our Lord. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, the covenant of new birth can also correct your faulty and perverted ancestry background number three consciously come under the covering of the prophets consciously come under the covering of the prophet and secure blessing as the prophet's reward a man called of god has blessings for those who recognize him as such Acts chapter 3 verse 25 Acts chapter 3 verse 25 quickly because I'm rounding up now and I'm going to begin to minister to you you are the children of the prophets listen to what he's saying he said you are the children of the prophets Acts chapter 3 verse 25 and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed look unto abraham that bear you look unto sarah look unto abraham can you see the thing is still connected you know the bible ties things down you cannot see one scripture that that is not flowing with another scripture you see a scripture i've shown you in isaiah you see in acts of the apostle the new testament is tying it down again to connect with what was said can you see that hallelujah in first Samuel chapter 2 verse 20 I need to give you these points before I do the administration first Samuel chapter 2 verse 20 and Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said Eli who was Eli the prophet that's why he said you should do what consciously come under the covering of the prophet and secure the blessing of the prophet Eli the prophet blessed Elkanah Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman. The Lord give thee seed of this woman. That is, the prophet brought the husband and the wife and pray the covenant of blessing over them. The Lord give you seed from this woman. That's why he said, Consciously come under the covering of the prophet. So that when it declares over your life, it can come to pass. The Lord give this seed of this woman. And see what happened. The Lord gave the seed of this woman. And said, the Lord give the seed of this woman for a loan. Which is lent to the Lord. And they went into their own home. Finished. They believed the prophet. They went into And Samuel came. Amen. Your blessing is going to be released to you today. In case you came in here barren, you are returning pregnant. And when we are talking about being barren, a lot of people who are men, they say, oh, he's talking about women. If a man is not barren, his life will be difficult. I mean, if a man is not pregnant, his life will be difficult. A man has to be pregnant. The pregnancy of a woman, he carries it for nine months. The pregnancy of a man, he carries it for a lifetime. 
A man has to be pregnant with ideas. It's not a nine month business. It's, it's, it's for life. If you are a man and you are barren, life will be hard. A man has to be pregnant. Because your mind is a womb. It's not carrying children. It carries ideas. It's a womb of ideas. A man has to be solid. He has to be pregnant. Constantly pregnant with ideas that will make progress. That will move the family forward. That will move, move his business forward. That will move his life forward. If you see a barren man, please leave him. If you are looking for who to marry, don't marry a man that is barren. Now, what, what, what are you thinking? I don't know. What's your idea? What is your vision? I don't know. Don't marry such a man. You will struggle. I'm telling you. A man doesn't have to have car or house before you can marry. But let him have practical, marketable ideas. Marry him. Somebody can have a car that he borrows to come and use it to show you something. Don't marry such people. Sit him down and ask him, what's your idea? What do you want to do? What are you doing? He said, I don't know yet. Okay, go. When you know, you come back. I don't want to suffer. <laughs> are the ladies hearing that? Amen. Praise God. Number four. Constantly stir up your covenant with God. Constantly. You want to have a change of destiny. Constantly. Constantly stir up your covenant with God. Constantly stir up your covenant with God. As some people when they are looking for something, it looks as if God said it's tomorrow. They, are, they give up today. When tomorrow comes, the blessing comes, you can't find it. Hallelujah. Do not save God on your terms. Save God on God's terms. Nobody goes to America on his own personal terms. Everyone that goes to America goes to America on the terms of the government of America. You can't save God on your terms. Serve God on God's terms. Serve God on God's terms. So constantly stir up your covenant with God speak the covenants at all times and break the backbone of corrupted lineage from your life in the name of jesus what are the benefits number one what are the benefits you secure a change of situation when your lineage changes your situation changes one practical benefit when you come out of a frustrated lineage a corrupted lineage when you come out of it is that you secure a change of situation. If you want your situation to change, your lineage must change. When your lineage changes, your situation will change. Number two, you enjoy covenant recognition. You enjoy what? Covenant recognition. When your lineage changes, you enjoy covenant recognition. You are not trying to cut somebody down so that you can be up. No. No. Far be from it. You are recognized on your own. In spite of who is there. One man's lifting is not the reason why you are down. You are down because there are some certain entanglements in your life. And the, moment, the day you realize it and make up your mind to break it. You are on your way to the top. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You enjoy covenant of recognition. Isaiah 61 and verse 9. Isaiah 61 and verse number 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. They will not struggle to be known. Look at Daniel. Let me show you something. Daniel, the first day Daniel went into the palace of the king. Hear what the king said. King Nebuchadnezzar. When he saw Daniel, he said, this is Daniel. He said, oh, I have even heard of you. Did you hear that? I have even heard of you. You don't need to lobby. Your name will be on the lips of great men. The day they see you, they say, wow, are you the one? We have even heard of you. 
You need to concentrate and be doing what you are should, what you are doing with greatness. You have to continue to do what you are doing with integrity. Praise God. It said, and their seeds shall be what? Renowned among the Gentiles. Can we finish reading that scripture? Look at it very well. And their seeds shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Oh, that's going to be somebody here. Everyone that sees you from today shall acknowledge that you are the seed that the Lord God of Israel has blessed. They will see glory on you. They will see blessing in your life. I said they will see glory on you. They will see blessing in your life. The Lord will lift you up by himself. And the lifting of the Lord, no one can bring you down. The Lord God shall bring you up with integrity, shall bring you up with wisdom, shall bring you up to inherit the blessing. And when great men see you, they will say, wow, so you are the one. We have even heard of you. We have heard of you that the spirit of the God is in you. That's what they told him. We didn't, they didn't see him. So don't seek to present yourself to people. Let them hear of the great things God is doing through you. Hallelujah. Someone is returning from here blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, you become highly productive. When that corrupted destiny, when you are disconnected from it, you become highly productive. Highly productive. That means you enjoy supernatural productivity. You don't struggle. Things happen on their own for you. I want to pray that God in heaven will look at certain men and certain women here and baptize them with high productivity grace. Grace for high sweatless productivity. Grace for high sweatless productivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 65 verse 23. You are the one God has blessed. Isaiah 65 23. That's how it is. I will give you two more points. They shall not labor in vain. When you are blessed, you shall not labor in vain. They shall not labor in vain. Neither shall they bring forth for trouble. That means your product shall not cause trouble for you. They shall not bring forth for trouble. That's what the Bible says. And you see why it says so. He said, they, for they are, for, simply mean because they are. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. And their offsprings with them, their children with them will come. See, I find out that God positions blessing at the beginning. It flows from generation to generation. But to others, you can start what your father never saw. The blessing that has never been seen in your family, you can pioneer it. Today, as you are baptized, as you are baptized with this anointing, you are, it's going to be a pioneering anointing. For you to start something in your family, a blessing that your children will come to inherit. A blessing that your great grandchildren will come and bless and bless a name that God created their great grandfather. They will come and say, I bless my great grandfather. He laid a foundation of blessing for us. When you are anointed, it's a pioneer's anointing. It's a pathfinder's anointing. It's a go-getter's anointing. Every day, every time you go and intend to get something, you will get that thing. If it's a blessing, if it will bless your life, if it will bless your family, if it will bless your nation, you will get it in the name of Jesus Christ. Go get us anointing. Pathfinder's anointing. Pioneering anointing. That is come up on somebody here. If that is to lift up your voice and shout, it's me. Say I believe it. Say I believe it. Say I believe it. Now God just showed me someone. You had a dream this night, this last night. 
This last night, it's just this last night. You had a dream. And when you come, I will tell you the time, the exact time, because you look at time also. You had a dream. And you are worried. And God said, you should come. And I'm going to bless you. But you wait first. Wait, don't come yet. Because I want to call many other people. So that you come all at the same time. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God just showed me something which the clue has covered. Something like a small Mad so clad yakata. Yeah, that's it. Something. It's like a small lump, but it's very small. And you touch it with your hand. It's covered. Nobody can see it. You touch it with your hand and you notice that a little thing is hard, that portion of your body. God said you should also get set and come because they're going to, that lump is going to be dissolved. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about lump that everybody sees. This kind of thing nobody sees. But only you. You see it there. Because where it is, it's only you that sees it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. During the all night, I was speaking. And I woke up to that point And I stood by a man. I said, whose name is this? And he said, he's the one. And he said, he only came here for one week. Since he came here. Uh, today, today as, as I, I begin, begin to, to prophesy, prophesy on your life, life God himself will locate you and, and your problems shall be solved today in the name of Jesus I've seen someone, someone every time the money comes into your hand you receive a call, call from mom it's, it's as, as if they are watching you it's, it's as, as if they are they, 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 they put their eyes on their witchcraft mirror and see you when money is not your hand nobody calls you the moment money enters your hand you receive bim bim they call you because they are monitoring you monitoring spirit God is going to shut that door in the name of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because it's disturbing your finances. You are not able to build. You are not able to do things that you should do. It's scattering your. It's a scatterer. It scatters, it scatters your money. It scatters your things. And you think you are helping, but it's not help. Praise God. God wants to. All those three. I've called three cases. Number one is what? Number one thing I call today is what? The dream. When? Uh -huh, because, because dream, you can dream many other day, day. But, but this one just happened, happened last night. Uh, and, and you look, look at the time, and it's, it's, you are worried. God said, settle the matter for her, for him. Number, Number two is what that, that little lump. lump. When, when you roll, roll your hand, you see it. God wants to dissolve it. it. In 2006, I was preaching like this, and I spoke the word of God with power, and the spirit of faith rose up in the heart of people. And at the left hand corner of that auditorium, a woman screamed. And I saw all shots rush in to go and see her. She began to open her lapa. What was she opening for? She was surprised because the mass that was sitting on her belly just disappeared. And she screamed. And then a woman said, this woman, we are living in the same house. When she walks around in the kitchen and walks around, we can see something hanging out. Very massive something. But when they look, the thing disappears. Whatever follows you down here, as I'm speaking right now, for those whose mind is here, whose heart is here, and the Lord that called me and sent me on an assignment, He will meet you at the point of your name in the name of Jesus Christ. As somebody said that shout, listen to what I see. As I shout, I see a nerve on the head of someone rising up on the head, head. and that is the problem of that person. If he talks loud, it's as if the head wants to explode. He feels pain, heavy pain on the head. That's why most of the time he whispers and talks slowly. The person talks slowly, whispers, because of the problem on the head. I want to, I want to bless my, I want to bless my hand on your head, and that head will begin to take shape. Physically speaking, God will reconstruct your head and bring a blessing and peace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ 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 somebody go upstairs bring a small child she has temperature now she has problem find out and bring them I want to pray it's gone it's finished in Jesus name lift up your hand lift up your hand hallelujah now before we pray I just see somebody right now somebody right now you receive a message concerning your child and your child is not in Sierra Leone. Receive a message. 
Don't, don't think, think your child, child is in Germany. Germany. I, will I will tell you where your child is, where you come. So, if you are among those I mentioned, please come. I want to I want you to be out here. I want to pray for you out here now. Church, watch it, watch it. Let them come out now. In the name of Jesus. Quiet, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Let them bring that child that is sick. The child is not well. Please bring that child. Let me lay hands. Let there be healing. Thank you, Jesus. You are the Lord, my love. The one. You are the one for me. The only one. The only one for me. that chapter and the blessing of the Lord shall remain with you in the name of Jesus Christ we want to bless in the name of the Lord it shall not be a devourer that vehicle shall not continue to take your money and continue every month every month every month every month so quickly come out come this way come this way come this way God bless you come come on come on come straight here the morning was open was not a jar, but it was not tough. And you told me you had dropped it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wait. I'm seeing a man who drove his own car and packed. Over the night, in the morning, the engine was still warm. Ah. The engine was still warm. The engine was still warm. Oh God, what happened? You pack your car at night, but when you wake in the morning, the engine warm. The engine still warm. The engine was warm. Come, find your way here. Find your way here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why should I feel when I when I have you? Surrounded by your lost, your everlasting love. Why should I give what people say? They don't know what it means to me. Listen, I'm seeing a man in a private hospital now. It's in a private hospital. And the television in front of you is Star TV. And you're watching me now, live. Your problem, you were taken there this past week to that hospital. And the doctors are still trying to make up exactly what is your case. They ran a few tests, not conclusive. They are battling with it. And if, I know you're watching now, right now. If you can pick up a phone, and call my number incidentally my phone was off but you can call it in the next one hour i will put on my phone i want to pick that 
I want to pick that. Man, if you know anyone that is a member of the church that is in church now, you can call the person. Now, you can call that person now if you can't do it. But the hospital is a little bit far on the eastern part, so I don't know. You, I don't think you can meet the service life. But I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. On Monday, tomorrow, the doctors will have a proper diagnosis and you are going to leave that hospital on Thursday. You are coming out, coming out of lights. Your situation will change automatically for the better. On Thursday, they are going to ask you to go home and you walk out of that bed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. Why should I feel I'm surrounded by your love. Never lost. So why should I give? Why should I give? What would you say? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean to me? Let's, we are going to close because there are too many things coming up now. There's somebody here, you kept money to buy a car. And that is not the first time. That is not the first time you kept money with the mind to buy a vehicle or to do something great, to do something in your life. It, it happened before, two years ago, you also made some money available to do something. And then something happened and you used that money for it. This one, something has also happened and you now want to use that money for it. But listen. Don't keep going in that cycle. Don't keep allowing the devourer to scatter your plan. I want to pray for you now in the name of Jesus. You are the one? Oh my God. Put your hands together for the Lord. He was even standing in front of me. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Lift up your hand and glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Lift up your hand and just glorify him. Glorify him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Your right hand, the shoulder, somewhere here, is giving you pain, just like you lift up your hand. Please come quickly. I want to lay hands on your shoulder now. And the hand of the Lord is going to... Come. Come. I've seen you. I've seen you. When you're lifting your hand, I saw it. Come. Your right shoulder. Hallelujah. You are the one? All right. God, God is going to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. You are the one. Good. God is going to help you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't you to me? They don't know. They don't, they don't know. know what you mean to me. They don't know. They don't know what you mean to me. What you mean to me. No one knows. They don't know what God means to me. Oh, Jesus. You are my life. You are my king. You are my Lord. No one knows what you mean to me. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you.
know my father doesn't know what Jesus means to me neither my mother neither my sisters neither my Jesus is everything to me hallelujah I love him love him so much thank you Jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you blessed be God lift up your hand say every monitoring spirit on my finances I blind you today in the name of Jesus every monitoring spirit on my finances every monitoring spirit on my finances on my health every I see a medical paper appointment this week to see a doctor you have an appointment to see a doctor stand up now come let me pray for you you are the person come come come, come. you know as you stand here things are unfolding again and again about you some of you the second time some of you the third time because god wants to deal with every issue amen thank you thank you jesus someone touching your boss 
where you keep money. Not in this church. That's not the first time you lost your money and you don't know how it has gone. You lost your money and you don't know how it has gone. Somebody touched it and you don't know where it went to. That was that's not the first time. It's not the first time. But it has happened again two times now. My soul. Hold on. This is the second time. And you're worried. You are hearing me, isn't it? You are the one? God bless you. Put your hands together for me. I'm going to pray for you. So that your blessings will come be steady in your hands things keep being unfolded among this time and again 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 thank you jesus lift up your hands and worship consider consider and stay hand of me and bring from up. And I saw while I was preaching. Where did begin where and they I said they should bring. Where is that church? Children's church? From children's church. Is this? Children's church. I said they should go up. Where were you? What's wrong with you? Come. Church. Eh? Up children's church. church. Come.
Resting crown. Resting crown. Lifting hands. Lifting hands. Bowing up. Bowing up. It's all. It's all we've got. One more time, sing. Casting crown. Casting crown. Lifting hands. Lifting hands. Bowing up. Bowing up. It's all.
over your feet because of the anointing every yoke that was upon your neck every burden that was upon your shoulders placed there by the enemy every burden of suffering every burden of failure every burden of sickness every burden of disease that the enemy placed upon your shoulders today in the name of Jesus as you are anointed I decree that such burdens are lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus went to the cross to lift burdens. I pray that from today, any burden from your lineage, any burden from your progenitors, upon your life, upon your destiny, such burdens are lifted at Calvary. By faith, I welcome you to Calvary. Amen. Your burdens are lifted today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From today as you are anointed, the tops of your mountains shall be seen. Amen. The glory of the Lord shall show forth in your life. Amen. 
the blessings of the Lord shall be registered in your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus as this oil comes to your place just put your hand put upon your forehead and prophesy what you want to see happening oh lord when i go on a journey i shall go in peace and return with joy whatever i am back upon i shall lay hold upon it the frustrations that came to me by reason of my progenitors lord jesus my destiny has changed i look on to abraham i look on to sarah i receive the blessing of abraham by the cross that jesus went to i receive my portion of blessing Open your lips and pray and prophesy upon your life. And whatever you declare over your life shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we bless this in the name of Jesus. And we decree that as it goes forth to your people, their faith shall connect with the miracle power. Whatever they are looking for that is in God, they receive it by this anointing in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Just prophesy over your life. Go from the back. back, back. To the middle. Pass me not Stand, stand from that. Stand from that. Go and stand from that. you sit on yourself and begin to prophesy what you want this month in the name of Jesus favor shall be my portion lift up your voice and prophesy once the oil comes to you quiet please
with this anointing I overcome every plan of the enemy made concerning the month of October this month I shall not weep this month my blood shall not be spilled on the road this month I shall not be a victim of accidents in the name of Jesus no accident at home no accident on the road my blood shall not be spilled on the road my blood shall not be soaked by demons open your lips and begin to pray concerning the month of October it's a month of favor for me in the name of Jesus I will arise I will have mercy in the afternoon in the morning in the evening in the daytime in the night season open your lips and pray this month the blessing of the Lord will reach me I shall not miss my blessing the Lord shall cover me in the day of battle God will cover my head I shall not be a victim of the arrows that fly it in the daytime of the terror that comes in the night I shall escape the terrors I shall escape the arrows of the enemy the hand of the Lord shall cover me the blood of Jesus will shield me in the name of Jesus Christ the blessing of the Lord shall rest in my family in my business in my career I shall receive the favor of God wherever I turn I shall have the mercy of God I shall come under the blessing of the Lord in Jesus mighty name this month of October shall be unto you the best month since this year began. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more. So the month of October shall be better than any month this year in the name of Jesus. From January to September, whatever made you to weep, you shall not weep in the month of October whatever made you to cry you shall not weep in the month of october whatever you saw in the months from january to september that you don't want to see again i pray in the name of jesus having brought us into the first day of the tenth month we shall not see evil anymore in the name of jesus the bible says the egyptians you saw before you shall see them more no more forever in the name of jesus any kind of blessing and goodness that came to you from january to september and you desire to see them again i pray this month they shall be multiplied upon your life they shall be multiplied upon your destiny in the name of jesus christ how many of you have the declaration of the month of october okay how many don't have how many of you do many many people don't have okay look at the board and so in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i declare the month of october the month that i will arise and have mercy he will arise and have mercy upon us in the name of jesus christ god said i will arise and have mercy upon you and your household may that be your experience in the name of jesus that is the word from god for us he said he will arise and have mercy upon us today and this month in jesus mighty name and for those who can see can we declare say i declare, I declare that by the mercies of god, mercy of god all, my all my mountains shall stand strong, shall stand strong. We, will we will increase in grace and prosper in the work of our hands his mercy will declare our liberty in every place and every time darkness shall not cover us by the mercies of god we will be seen as products of the mercy of god we will jump over every obstacle and walk with the blessed we are the seed of the blessed in the name of jesus christ amen that's it so you declare that for yourself those who have it those who don't have it 
Make sure on Tuesday you are here. You will make more copies and we give you your own copy in Jesus' name. You wake up in the morning, that's what to declare. You go back to bed, that's what to declare. You go to your shop, that's what to declare. Every place you find yourself, make sure you have this with you and you declare the same for yourself in Jesus' name. So I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree that the hand of the Lord shall rest upon you. The Lord will have mercy upon you this month of October. His face shall shine upon you in Jesus' mighty name. This month is a month of greatness. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's, let's clap some more for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. For those who came in here with their um, seeds, you know, to worship the Lord with,